I'm hearing more and more stories of people switching to a vegan diet and noticing that their triglyceride levels are increasing. Now studies have shown that those eating plant-based diets over the long term consistently have lower triglyceride levels, but interventional trials have been less consistent. This review found that triglycerides may either increase or decrease when switching to a plant-based diet and can either go up or down by less than roughly 25 in either direction. Now this is a cause for concern as those with higher triglycerides have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So let's hear from plant-based registered dietitian Brenda Davis first and then a plant-based cardiologist Dr Joel Kahn on what we can do if we find ourselves in this position. We tend to see increases in triglycerides with alcohol intake and the other is refined carbohydrates. A lot of people think, okay, well, I'm not eating refined carbohydrates. I only use whole grain breads. I only use oatmeal. But what you need to understand is that even within that whole grain category, there are degrees of processing. When it's highly processed, the impact on blood sugar is very rapid and it can have a greater impact on your uh, triglycerides as well. And so I created this thing, which I call the whole grain hierarchy. And at the top of the whole grain chart, the very best whole grains that you can eat are intact whole grains. They're grains sort of as they're picked off the plant. Kamut berries, spelt berries, farro berries, quinoa, oat groats. You know, the only thing taken away might be the outer hull. You just sprout them or cook them. Those are your two choices. They have the lowest impact on blood sugar. They have the lowest impact on triglycerides because they're absorbed so slowly. The fiber will be in bigger chunks even after chewed than it would be in something that's ground. So the next on the hierarchy would be cut whole grains, steel cut oats or bulgur, okay? And so all you've done to that grain is cut it. So it's still got everything there. It's still a really good choice. It's going to be absorbed a little more quickly than the intact grain, but it's still a good choice. The next on the list after cut would be rolled. So all you do is roll the grain. So that would be rolled oats or rolled barley or rolled rye. And what you've done when you've rolled it is you've increased the surface area. And when you increase the surface area, you increase how quickly it can be broken up and absorbed into your bloodstream. Then after rolled would be shredded, something like shredded wheat. Again, you're increasing the surface area. And then after shredding would be grinding. That would be your whole grain flour products. The surface area is huge. Uh, so it is absorbed very rapidly. If you compare whole wheat bread, the GI of whole wheat bread versus white bread, well, white bread might be 72 or 70 74 and whole wheat 70 to 72 because it's a ground grain and it's pretty rapidly absorbed and then after the ground grains you've got flaked and then puff flaking and puffing processes puffing is 1500 pounds of pressure to make this grain light and fluffy it just dissolves in your system and is very rapidly absorbed as a matter of fact some of the puffed wheat or puffed rice cakes, for example, have a higher glycemic index than sugar. It will affect your triglycerides. And so you're far better off eating a pumpernickel bread that you could stand on the loaf, very heavy with the whole grains in it. You can see those kernels of grains or seeds. And that's a bread that that will have far less of an impact on blood sugar. This type of bread might have a GI of 45 or 50. One of the things about pasta is it's very dense. And so the impact on your blood sugar will depend on how much it's cooked. So if you do it al dente, it's fairly firm. It, it actually has a fairly low glycemic impact. And so if you're eating a flour product, Pasta is one of the better flour products to be eating in terms of a whole grain. I would say whole wheat pasta is a reasonable choice, but you can do better than whole wheat pasta. The better choice is legume pasta, black bean pasta, chickpea pasta, edamame pasta, zuki bean pasta. All of these pastas made of beans have a much lower glycemic impact and much more fiber as well. It is an observation. It's an observation if you go back almost 30 years from Dr. Dean Ornish's randomized studies that 
um, you know, HDL might drop a little bit and triglycerides might bump a little bit. People can be distressed by that. The beauty of Dr. Ornish's observation is it was simultaneous with showing that atherosclerosis was reversing, but the reassurance from Dr. Ornish's studies is, what do you want, clean arteries or a perfect triglyceride level? I'd pick the clean arteries uh, and not worry too much about the lab test. The second answer is I have the luxury in a pretty advanced cardiac prevention clinic. All my patients have a blood level on omega-3. It's prevalent everywhere, whether you're an omnivore, whether you're a junkie plant food eater, which is a bad place to be, whether you're eating a really clean whole food plant-based diet. Many, many people are low in omega-3. It's a blood test. and It's pretty widely available, but it's rarely done. And we know the importance of adequate omega-3 DHA, EPA, essential fatty acids for brain health and cell membrane health and lipid management, a favorable impact on blood glucose control. But on triglyceride content, it's critically important. There are prescription drugs, of course, that lower triglyceride through using uh, fish-based oil. So I'm, I'm a zealot here about chia seed, flaxseed, a couple of tablespoons a day of ground flaxseed to most people. Most of my patients are taking three to 500 milligrams a day of algae-based EPA, DHA, and their triglycerides are fine. So either they were abnormal and I corrected them or uh, I corrected them via serious focus on omega-3 supplementation. If you don't check, you don't know. The data is pretty strong that the blood level of omega-3, it's called a predictive biomarker actually of survival. Jack Gregor did a video on brain health and an omega-3 level of 4.5% and higher in your blood. Normal is 5.5, but you just don't want to dip real low. So either ask your doctor a blood test on your omega-3 level, or you can actually find one of these online companies just pay and get a doctor. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more upcoming videos.